Vera, Grazie Gifts. Mm, interesting, great location. Beautiful house. Yeah, <laughs> looking at the ocean, have a boarding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you know, I, I think, again, it's a really tough, tough gig because um, people do need that type of gift, but it, it's not necessarily, um, look, I, I think, I, I would go back to the drawing board with Vera. I'd say, first of all, find a niche where there's a demand on a regular basis. So I know of someone, I think we both know of someone who looks after hospitals and they do gifts for people when they have children. So the first thing I would do is always go, well, where is the regular cash flow so I can do some predictive analysis? And then once you've found that it is, for example, hospitals, I would focus on that as who I market to. Then you can walk through a hospital, you can deliver 10 of these things if you wanted to, not one at a time, and you basically become known for this niche market. Potentially, you can also have add-on services if you wanted to. Be, and if you are, for example, in a hospital and someone's had a child, then there could be the one-year-old gift basket. There could be all sorts of regular gifts. Like IKEA, grow with the children. Yeah, grow with the, with the lifestyle, with, with the family. I'm not sure if there's enough strategy behind it to make it any more than a small hobby. Uh, and I can't see how it's going to be a large business unless you really refine your target and you estimate the potential cash flows. I think some very wise words from yourself. I think Vera's takeaway point was not the, um, not the questions that she won't answer, but the fact that she was held accountable to where is your plan? Mm. What does that look like? You can't grow at this pace and stay in, in the garage and, and make the money that you want to and it to actually be a business. So she was left actually really excited about the fact that, oh my God, I need to actually get a plan to see where I'm going. How can I possibly yeah. make any other decisions otherwise? Well, yeah. So I always, I plan every three days. I work on a plan because you're always shifting your focus. So as well, that's new one, David. I was doing a ninety-day plan, but three days. Yeah, because you are always working on your plan and how to refine things, change things, and improve things. So you should be working on your strategy. So essentially, for Vera, she needs a very, very strong plan with other people saying, "Well, what about this? Why is that a good idea?" If you're going to be the person delivering, what happens when you've got a cold? You know, all these things here. Um, and you've sometimes got to let go. You know, you're not the only charming person to deliver a basket. Mm. You know, there are I other like, I like the old saying, I don't know if I actually came from you or not, I'm not sure, which was, um, it's always been my philosophy to hire people better than you. Mm. And in that area. Yeah. So there'll be someone who's better at digital marketing, always. someone who's better at customer service, there'll be someone. someone, and that is, um, when I um, agreed with that statement, it allowed me then to relax into the, the letting go. Mm, you've got to let go ultimately and you've got to look for people who are better than you and to work with them because there are people who can deliver better than her in a more charming manner. Um, so, <laughs> But we won't tell her that, yeah. even though we're on TV. Yeah, okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Although she probably okay. knows now. Yeah. 